Hi, everyone. This is Ben Forstag, Managing Director of MaxList, and I'm sitting here with Mac Pritchard, the founder and editor of MaxList, and Jenna Forstrom, our community manager. And this week, as a bonus episode, we're going to talk about an article that we posted on the MaxList Facebook group in mid-February. And this article is actually the most shared piece of content that we have ever put on our Facebook page. And so we thought we'd share it with our audience. This is an article from the New York Times, and the headline is Walt Bettinger of Charles Schwab. You've got to open up to move up. And the key thing from this article is one of the things Walt Bettinger does when he's interviewing executive staff is he takes them out for breakfast. And before he shows up in the restaurant, he actually calls up the uh, restaurant manager and asks them to intentionally bring the wrong dish for the applicant. Um, you know, he promises you know, he's going to tip everyone and this is what he wants to have happen. Uh, but the idea is he wants to see the applicant's reaction uh, when the wrong meal is brought to him. Uh, and this is one of the ways he tests his applicants. So I wanted to touch base with the Maxa staff here and ask them what they thought about this as an interview tip. Yep. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting article. I think it's a great way to judge how people in an instant are going to react to like a negative situation. The only thing where I think this could be like a really bad idea is this if you have a food allergy <laughs> and you're expecting something like an omelet to not have mushrooms and it's got mushrooms in it. But maybe that's just like the Portlander in me where everyone has like a food allergy that we deal with. So I don't know, Ben, Mac, what did you guys think? Well, this rang true to me. I, in fact, when I was uh, starting the hiring process that brought you on board, Ben, I, I met with a local business owner and I asked her for tips about hiring. And she said two things. One was that she spent about 15 hours uh, getting to know a candidate. And the reason she did that and put people through multiple interviews was that she that we end up spending about two thousand hours a year with somebody. And so you want to get to know somebody really well before you make that decision to to bring them on board. So it's a good fit for not only you but for them as well. The other thing she told me was that she made a point of taking the candidate and the candidate's partner or spouse uh, out to dinner with uh, her and her husband to see how, people, how the candidate behaved uh, around servers. And uh, she said she'd actually had people make it that far in the process and because of the way they treated wait staff, decided not to hire them. That's really interesting. I, uh, I, I love this technique because it's so out there and uh, it's totally from left field. I don't think anyone's really expecting this if they're applying for a job. But I totally agree with the idea of how you treat other people, particularly how you treat people who have less power than you, being a real strong indicator of who you are as a person. And um, you know, I can imagine situations in which the waiter brings the wrong dish and the applicant just freaks out and screams. I could also envision situations in which the applicant doesn't say anything and just kind of quietly accepts what they've been given. And uh, I'm actually thinking on that latter point, Mac, like if the person didn't say anything about the mistake and just ate their meal, what do you think that would say about the applicant if you were hiring them or considering hiring them? I, I guess I would wonder why they didn't speak up because there is a, a polite professional way to say, I think a mistake has been made here. I ordered this. Could you bring me, uh, bring that to me? And I, I think it's fair to say that whether you have a food allergy or not. What are your thoughts, Jenna? I mean, I'm not a picky eater. Unless they're strawberries, which I'm allergic to, so I would totally freak out if there were strawberries. But I'm trying to think, if I was in that situation, what would I do? And I feel like I'd either just not care and eat it, or I'd just be like, you know, life or death. Like, hey, I'm not going to eat this strawberry cobbler. Like, sorry. But I guess I'm from the generation where my mom used to put food in front of me and I would just eat it. So just kind of go with the flow, which could be a good quality in a potential hire. Well, I guess I'm kind of like Jenna in, in that way because uh, you guys know when we go out to restaurants for a business meal, I always like tell the waiter, oh, just bring me anything on the menu. I'll like it. Um, and so uh, I guess my inclination would be to not say anything and just kind of take the meal and roll with it. Um, but it's interesting to hear that there is like that is a wrong answer, I guess. So the other question I have for you guys is, is there anything job applicants could do to prepare for this kind of test, something that's so out of left field that – you know, I can't imagine anyone preps you on on this kind of interview technique. Can you can you think of any way that that job seekers could prepare? 
I think the best way to prepare is to be yourself. And if you're a polite, gracious person, uh, this is not going to be a problem. Uh, you and I don't think if you take the meal and eat it, that's a, a black mark. I think if uh, I expect what this fellow is 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 trying to to draw it is to see what people do when somebody else makes a mistake and how they react. And uh, and to your point, Ben, if how do they react towards people who ha have less power than they do? So uh, be yourself, and if you treat people the way you want to be treated, this is not a problem. Yeah, I think that's right on the mark. Any thoughts from you, Jenna? I think it's just in this day and age, you need to be ready for those curveball questions or those curveball actions. And it could be like you're talking about business and strategy. And then the next question is like, what was your favorite childhood movie? And that's just to get, you know, like you go from, you know, left brain to right brain or right brain to left brain. And it's just to, to check how well you are at transitioning, but also kind of get more insight into who, how personable you are. Can you hold a conversation and what are you willing to like offer up? Cause it might be something really embarrassing or it could be like a great, like, Oh, I loved brave little toaster. And then you're connecting about that or something. But if, if you get kind of caught off on off guard by those kind of questions, it's kind of like, well, can they jive with our company culture over doing the actual role? And I think speaking to your point, Jenna, and what, this whole exercise uh, with going to the restaurant really is about is finding culture fit. And what we hear again and again from employers is that uh, culture fit matters as much, if not more, than your skill set when you're applying for a job. So uh, again, be yourself, but be kind, courteous, be good to each other, folks. That's the key. So thank you, Mac and Jenna, for giving us some time today to talk about this. And thank you all for listening. If there's an article about job search or career development you'd like us to talk about, uh, please send it to us. You can contact Jenna with the link at jenna at maxlist.org. In the meantime, thanks and have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>